are new around here, welcome. My name is Claudia, also known as the Organized Homemaker. For today's video, we're going to be talking about bringing the butterflies to your garden. I know it's late in the season, but I also know during the winter months is when we plan our garden for the following season. So I wanted to make this video so that you would have the education, the knowledge, as it were, to plant a garden to bring all the pollinators to your yard. I particularly love butterflies and hummingbirds. And so when I'm planting new plants in the garden, I like to make sure that these will be things that the butterflies will like as well as the hummingbirds. Today we'll be focusing on butterflies and I'll be inserting footage of butterflies that I've captured throughout this season in the garden. So far this year I've caught I think eight or nine different types of butterflies that are native to the south where I live. I live in Georgia, zone 7b and so you could do the same. Plant things that will attract butterflies that are um, native to your region, to your garden. The first plant we're going to talk about today is the Miss Huff variety of the lantana. Lantana is a very, very prolific plant and this particular type gets very high. This variety gets to be very big. It is about five, six feet tall. So it's as tall as the porch of my house because you could see it over there behind me right here. And it is also um, very wide. So I would say it's, it takes up a eight foot space and it's about six feet tall. So it's one monster of a plant. But I knew this going into planting it and so I allocated space for it. I have four of them in my garden two are this size and the others were babies I planted last year. Those babies are about three by three though so like I said they get to be fairly large. It does die back in the winter so I prune it heavily in the spring maybe 12 to 18 inches high and then allow it to take off in the summer. This plant is visited frequently by hummingbirds as well as butterflies so you can't go wrong. If the size is a bit daunting for you, I would suggest investing in some of the smaller varieties. I do know though that this is truly the only one that has perennialized in my area. You can plant some of the others and I'll insert some footage here that I took when I went to our local farmers co-op and they had two in bar uh, wine barrels outside of the co-op and the butterflies were busy there as well. Now this year I did not add anything new to my garden. So all I had were plants that were here before because from a financial perspective, this needed to be a budget neutral year when it came to the garden. So I allowed the plants that I had to continue to attract the pollinators that, uh, that usually frequent my garden. I highly recommend that you plant plants that return yearly so that you save money, number one, but your pollinators know what to expect coming into your yard. The next plant we're going to talk about today is salvia. This is just a regular type of salvia that you find in the nursery. I bought this at my local nursery and it was like a dollar a plant. I bought several um, last year and added them to the garden. Now these are perennialized in our area. So once you plant them, they reseed and they come back faithfully for me every single year. They are non-invasive. They don't reseed aggressively. So it's nice to have a plant that I know I can rely on to come back for my wonderful butterflies. Now, another reason I like this plant is the blue color. There are very few things that are this nice blue color in the garden and it stands out um, amongst the pinks right here, as well as these um, lime line hydrangeas. And of course the roses, which are no longer blooming. So this is another one that I highly, highly recommend. Another plant that I recommend is Black Eye Susans. Now Black Eye Susans are no longer in bloom in my garden, but they do attract the butterflies. I'll insert some footage of it in from other times in the garden. Another plant that I like to have in the garden for my butterflies are Echinacea or coneflowers. 
Now cone flowers do double duty because after they have finished blooming, they then become a food source for birds. So I like to leave the seed heads attached so that the birds can have some food in the winter. They do bloom for a very long period. Typically, mine starts blooming late May and bloom until frost. So that's a long period of time. They tend to send up multiple bloom stalks and continue, like I said, blooming until frost. It is highly recommended to add cone flowers also because they produce seed pods that you can take off and actually sprinkle and help to get more plants, which is how I tend to get my black eye Susans, my echinacea, as well as salvia and some other things that do produce their own seeds. No conversation with, about butterflies would be complete without talking about butterfly bushes. These things smell heavenly. It actually smells like honey to me. Um, the bees love it, the butterflies even more, and the hummingbirds too. Are you noticing a pattern? Many things that you plant for the butterflies will also attract the bees as well as hummingbirds. This particular butterfly bush sees nonstop activity from morning till night. And there are sometimes multiple butterflies and hummingbirds fighting over the different blooms. Now I know that there is some information out there that says butterfly bushes are um, invasive. I have not found that to be true here in my garden. Like I said, I have multiples and I plant them. This garden bed alone has three. The other bed over there has one. There is a huge one in the back flower bed and another one, two on that side of the house. And I'm going to keep adding them because like I say, I love the butterflies and I love the hummingbirds. And so I plant specifically for them. When I see them, I smile. So definitely adding more. These newer ones tend to stay put. They do become large though, if you buy the regular size, but they're the Pugster series by Proven Winners that are dwarf varieties that stay fairly small nice and compact so if you're if you are space challenged in the garden you can consider adding one of those if you're like me and decide that you want to have the larger ones for more impact then go ahead and do so they do come in multiple colors there's white there's red there's purple there's pink there's lavender there is yellow as well as a multicolored one i had a multicolored one and my husband was helping me to prune and he pruned too aggressively at the wrong time and it died. So I'm on the hunt for it. Another one that we'll talk about is butterfly weed. Butterfly weed is no longer in bloom and the foliage has died down, but I will show you some footage that I have from earlier in the year and I will show you that it is a vibrant orange color. It attracts all types of butterflies and it is one of the the plants that the monarchs love. And we all know our beloved monarchs are in danger. So adding something that helps to make their life easier is definitely something that you want to do. Now they can grow it from seed or you can buy the plant already established at your local nursery. Or you can do what I do. I live in the country and I saw it growing on the side of the road. I dug it up because in our county, anything that's on the side of the road gets mowed every couple of months. And so rather than have it get mowed over, I dug it up and stuck it in my garden and have over time split it and have added it in multiple um, locations. So butterfly weed is another one. Another plant that I have in the garden are canna lilies. Canna lilies are a beautiful banana leaf looking type plant that produces a tall, uh, on a tall stalk, adds height, and it comes in uh, variegated leaves, uh, dark maroon color leaves, uh, tropicana, blooms bright orange, bright red, yellow. And of course, those are colors that attract butterflies and hummingbirds. As a result, I have them in several of my gardens. At this moment, they're all cut back because uh, they don't like the cold and we've gotten as low as 40 and they're not happy. Another plant that I have in my garden that attracts the hummingbirds and butterfly are, is the honeysuckle. This is a honeysuckle vine. You see this beautiful color that I'm getting for the fall. 
but it is called Golden Flame Honeysuckle. And I'll show you some footage of it in the summertime. Another plant that I want to talk about is Phlox. Phlox is a powerhouse for butterflies in the garden. This particular one is a light pink variety that I have. I'll put the name on the screen. And I am telling you all, all kinds of butterflies can be found on this plant. It blooms from spring all the way until frost. And then it produces loads of seeds, which I have over time taken and scattered in the garden and now have many plants without having to buy any. I love, love, love phlox. I have a light pink one, this one, as well as a deep purple and a, a, a hot pink. I'm looking to add white to the garden as well. I'm sorry y'all, my neighbor is now mowing his lawn, so if you can't hear me, that's what that is. Another plant that I choose to add to the garden each year are zinnias. Zinnias are an annual, so here I have to replant them, but I don't mind because they bloom all summer long. And most zinnias are cut and come again, meaning you cut them, they'll come back, and you have more blooms. They attract all type of pollinators to the vegetable garden, which is where I mostly plant them. But going forward, I'll be adding some zinnias to the front and back borders in order to have year-long color. That's another benefit. But they attract loads of butterflies. The hummingbirds like them too. And I have seen hummingbird moths on them, as well as other pollinators. So the bees like them, the wasps, and you want a healthy ecosystem in your garden. So zinnia is a good one for that. Comes in multitudes of colors, as well as different types of bloom styles. Look at this tiny, look at this tiny orange one. Another plant that I also plant in the vegetable garden each year is Celosia. Now Celosia is also called in Jamaica puss tail because it looks like a cat's tail. And we grow this each year. I don't have to see this because it reseeds itself and each year I'm pulling out thousands of plants because it reseeds heavily. But I, I don't mind because the butterflies come. Y'all, I'll do anything for my butterflies. Okay. While you're busy planting food for the butterflies, don't forget the caterpillars. Caterpillars such as swallowtail caterpillars love parsley, dill, as well as fennel. Monarchs are known to love milkweed. Please do your research and plant only milkweed native to your region of the country in order to not only feed the monarchs, but other butterflies in your region. While you're adding food, don't forget water. Water is essential to help them quench their thirst. If you are going to use a bird bath like I do, don't forget to put a few stones in order for them to have an elevated place to land so that they won't drown while they are taking a drink. Also is important is to have areas where butterflies can hide and make their chrysalis in order to go through metamorphosis. Uh, my butterflies tend to like big leaves and they hide in areas that I wouldn't even think to look. So having nice areas in order for them to have a place to safely go into a cocoon is a good idea as well. Thank you for watching. This is by no means an exhaustive list of all the plants that can be added for butterflies, but I do know that it'll get you started. I hope you've enjoyed the little look in my garden as well as the various scenes throughout this season where the butterflies visited me. If you've enjoyed this content, please consider subscribing. Until next time, happy gardening. <music>